Hello. Just realized my hat was on backwards. Am I going to change it? Maybe. Uh, we're watching Hotline, starring Linda Carter, uh, made for TV thriller, and uh, that's it. Um, I have picked out the films for next month. A lot of them are from the 70s, and that was not planned. Uh, I did an 80s run where I wanted to watch movies that were closer to now, because we have been kind of meandering in the 50s and 60s for quite some time. And I was like, I just want some... One, I want movies with color. In, like, I, And I want something closer to now. I know we're not going to get like made this year, necessarily. But let me find something closer to um, now than 100 years ago. Because <laughs> uh, we did watch one movie that was 100 years old, Nosferatu. It was 100 years old when we watched it. But um, all that to say, today we got Hotline. Um, I don't even remember what's happening next week. Oh, I think next week was a movie that uh, Shadow suggested because Shadow found out that the boy in the plastic bubbles in the public domain, which is uh, basically Bubble Boy, but more dramatic and from the 70s and starring John Travolta. So uh, that'll be next week, but this week again, it's Hotline with Linda Carter, who is um, uh, the Wonder Woman on television. Um, I also feel like it is important to mention there is no April's Fool April Fool's Day plan or joke because I hate April Fool's Day. I think it's stupid. I hate it on the internet because what it basically just means is you can't trust anything anybody says. The day, and I don't really I don't really care for that. So figure we just move on. And we watch some Hotline. And I think I've said it enough that we can just do it. Um, in terms of Sunday, because I'm not doing any streams on Wednesday, Wednesdays, uh, at least for the foreseeable future. Um, Sunday, I don't believe it will be Baldur's Gate with Kiwi. I have not confirmed, but I don't know if it will be. I have a feeling it won't be. Because uh, cause, cause Kiwi is uh, busy with uh, with things, and uh, you know we're not, I'm not gonna rush them. They have life. They have a life to live and and things to do. But uh, in the event that uh, gaining people's confidence, lying to them, and deceiving them is hilarious, people actually trusted you, and now they lost it. <laughs> I just, I hate, I hate April Fool's Day. Because I hate the internet, because the internet is like, oh, so you just lie. Like, it used to be, like, an April Fool's Day prank. Hold on. Only because this is bugging me. It's a milk hat. But it's way too bright for you to see the actual gallon of milk hat. But, um... Hells yeah, Shadow. Milk cheers. But it's just so annoying that the internet and April Fool's Day is just, oh, well, we come out with an announcement that's fake. That's stupid. It's annoying. Because for people that don't actually give a shit that it's April Fool's Day and just want information, they're just annoyed. Because then they go, what? And then you go, oh, it's April Fool's Day. Hilarious. What geniuses of humor you are to construct a lie and post it. Congratulations. Anyway, all that is, is it's nonsense. It's a waste of time. Uh, but yeah, Church Has Glasses will probably be Helldivers 2 in the event. I cannot um, confirm Kiwi for Baldur's Gate 3 on Sunday. Because I'll be honest with you, uh, Helldivers 2 has become a miniature problem for me. Uh, it's very, very fun. Exciting. Takes my attention. 
and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hooked. Kind of hooked in. I've hooked in some t some other folks, so I'm very excited to play it. Um, the only thing now is, you know, coordinating times, which as an adult is impossible, but I can still play it by my lonesome if I wish. Um, but yeah. Let's watch Hotline. Because I got nothing else. And this one's an hour. Like, uh, also, when you get to movies closer to now, or just a little bit closer to, to current day, they're actually movie life. <laughs> so, like, every movie I was getting at recently was like, oh, wow. 87 minutes, 97 minutes. Uh, 107 minutes? Wow. Holy shit. Anyways, let's, um... Let's get to it, huh? First thing we gotta do, we gotta turn down the 80s music. We gotta go into the theater. All right. Here we go. Starting off like The Shining, nice. The car just goes over the cliff. <laughs> A gloved hand. Welcome to Dumping a Body 101. In this video, you will learn how to properly dump a body. In the event that you or someone you know have murdered another human being, maybe they died by accident. No one here is judging you, but you need to get rid of a body and get rid of it fast. That was less than graceful. Hotline. Okay, the music is kind of awesome. What kind of car is that? Are you gonna do the waggy races? <laughs> that car is awesome! Holy shit! Are you gonna ask for some Grey Poupon on the way to work? That's awesome music, awesome car. Have to, <laughs> might have to look up the fucking soundtrack to Hotline. Figure out who's making this dope ass music. It's kind of John Carpentery and I'm honestly gonna be bummed when they start going to conversation. <laughs> Out of control, dude. 
Hey, we're going to Kyle's. <laughs> Gross music transition on so many levels. Whoa, here we are. I got my goose I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. Barney, the sorry. boss man around? No, you ain't in yet, so you're lucky. Good. Look, uh, Scotch from the rocks here and vodka down the end. He's trouble. Okay. All right. Yep. Knock yourself out. Thanks. <laughs> I guess I should have been out of here four hours ago. Thanks Not a right. bunch. Sweet, right? okay. I need two bourbon and sodas, two baggies, one with that salt. You know, Brian, I think there's a full moon out tonight. The fanny grabbers are out in force. But I'll just keep smiling, honey. It's easy for you to say you're back there. <laughs> I'm black and blue. It was the 80s. Next time one of them does it, why don't you give him the old Bronx shampoo? <laughs> I'm guessing Thanks. the car was probably like a gift or something, like a family heirloom. The house, I mean... Fuck. Another drink down here. Take it out of five? Take it anywhere you can get it, honey. Yeah. Change is yours. You're too kind. I think I'm great. I just Hey there, Kyle. Hey, old buddy. How's it going? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. You working? Got a high fall on Thursday. Great. Good luck. All right, take it easy. Okay. Is that Kyle? Of the title, Boss, Kyle. You were late. Shoot, how did you find out? I didn't. I just took a wild guess. <laughs> Damn, son. Looks like you got yourself a fan. Yeah, isn't he a cutie? Call me at 86 now. Are you kidding? The way he tips? Oh, I'm so, so sorry. Oh, oh, forgive me. She said, oh, Terrible. in a very strange way. <laughs> hey, sweet baby. Oh. Call me if that one gets out of line. Oh, Kyle's got a, a walking issue. Is there any rhyme or reason to this parking lot? It seems like a, re a real anarchy situation. Well, the lighting is pretty bad across the board. It's hard to tell what anything is. But Is that Linda Carter? You want me to stay? No, I'll be fine. Okay. My feet are killing me. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Good night. Uh, where's the phone, miss? It's right over there. Thanks. You passed it to answer your question. Night. Hey, baby. How about you and me getting a little nightcap down at the beach bar? <laughs> No, thanks. Uh, it's been way past my bedtime. Well, maybe a little taste back in my motel? You gotta be kidding. Listen, honey. I tipped you over $20 tonight. Is that, Is that Rod Cordry? Yes. It entitles you to thank you, a smile, and good night. Hey, look here. Yeah. I paid Don't you for sex. I'm probably to do something like that then. Hey, jerk. Why don't you take your $20 in tips and get the hell out? Hey, listen, uh, we're both on edge. I'm tired, you've had a lot to drink, and it's been a hell of a long day. So why don't we just forget cordial. tonight and start all over from scratch another time? Okay. Thank you for giving me my tip money back. I thought it entitled me to sex. Give it a chance, we might even be friends. Good night. Drive safely. <laughs> no, he should be getting a cab. He should be in the diplomatic service. You handle that one like a pro. Oh, what was either that or uh, Barney's old equalizer? Mm. It's too late for a cup of coffee. Oh, that's no problem. Oh, that's for me. Hello. Yeah, hi, Rick. Uh huh. This dude is something I don't what are trust. The accusing her of this time? I don't trust this guy. Don't trust him. Boy, is she gonna Calling it you. now. Well, as long as they don't start giving her orders, we can keep the thing under control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be in trouble then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye bye. Thanks. It's nice to meet you. 
meet you, Brian. I'm Justin Price. Pardon me? Justin Price. Hope to see you around. A Justin yeah. Price? Thank you. I'm uh, here four nights a week. Coffee's always hot. Come in again sometime. Thank you. No one. No one's gonna ask about the car. No one is curious about that car. I trust the drunk more. It's never the obvious creep. Yeah, for sure. But like, no one. He doesn't even ask a question about that car. Like, not even a question. Like, wow, interesting car. Like, even nothing. Not even a, a comment. <laughs> the car is so interesting. Also, her hair would be all over the place, because <laughs> through basic cause and effect of driving that with no top down, or with no top up, your hair would be all over the joint. But what do I know? <sighs> Movies. Full of lies. Also, did he call her Brian? I'm going to look up the characters in this movie. I swore he called her Brian. It's Brienne. Oh, interesting. Did he just miss say it or did I mishear it? I don't know. Ho! Oh, we got ourselves a creeper. This was on television, so do not tell me I need to quickly scooch away due to boobs. Got some lady shoulders. Oh, oh, oh. The angles of no nudity showers. She just the first woman to die, like in Scream. And her name's at the top of the poster. Is she the Drew Barrymore of this feature? I doubt it, but I'm kind of confused. Do not show me any nudity. I don't want to get banned from Twitch due to boobies. Don't show me any nudity. She's got to wear <laughs> her matching socks with her fucking bathrobe. If she doesn't do that, then it doesn't match. And then what's the point? You might have company like now. Who is it? It's uh, Justin Price. We just met at the bar. How did you get to my fucking house? Uh, yeah. What do you want? Are you okay? Sure I'm okay. Why shouldn't I be? Well, I, I saw that drunk follow you out of the parking lot, and I tried to follow him, but I sort of lost... You, you sure you're okay? Yes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Price. It's uh, really thoughtful of you, but 
Place is all locked up, and I'm fine. I appreciate your concern. But I'm very tired, and uh, maybe I'll see you another time. Good night. Good night. That's the predator mimicking her voice. The door's open. <gasps> but I think he's gone. Who's gone? The guy who forced the door. Are you saying that there was somebody inside this house? Yep. Operator, get me the police. Uh, yes, sir. This is Brian O'Neill. One eight. Brian. Caladello Canyon. Right, a break in. Yeah, that There's is suspicious. Your name, Justin Price, who says that he saw the guy. Oh, just a second. They want you to wait. Fine. Fine. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, what? Very suspicious. I think he's gone. Though I kind of like this setup. Want a cup of coffee? Thank you. Yes. Another cup of coffee. The man's addicted to caffeine. But no, seriously, like. It's kind of a fun setup. Is to... uh, instant all right? Oh, sure. You're an artist. Yeah, I try. I'm still studying. That is very good. Thank you. And you tend bar. It pays the tuition. And for the That's house? Place. It's not mine. I'm just house sitting. House sitting. What do you do in your spare time? Why? You mean besides paint? Yeah, I could use someone like you. Doing what? Taking phone calls. What do you mean? Well, you, you see, I'm a psychiatrist. I run a crisis center called Westside Hotline. It's where people with emotional problems can call for help. Seeing the way you handle that drunk tonight, you're exactly the kind of person I look for. That was fast. Almost like he's working for the police. Well, whoever it was is gone, Miss O'Neill. You say it was some drunk from the bar? Mm-hmm. I followed him out of the parking lot. Is this your car, Dr. Price? Okay, doctor. If we need more information, we'll call you. And, Miss O'Neill, be sure and keep all your doors and windows locked. Oh, don't worry about that. I will. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Now, you will think about Hotline. Yes, it's the least I can do. You will think about Hotline. You don't want to go down that route. What a... Like, because it's, it's already super interesting, like, why this guy is so concerned about her. And such an odd offer to make in such weird circumstances. In other words, I'm kind of digging the setup to this movie <laughs> in a weird way. <laughs> Is this your car? Oh, the super expensive one that's not anything like the other cars used in this film? And no one's going to ask her about it. No one's going to ask. She looks like she should be wearing, like, driving goggles. And have a dog in the passenger seat with a smaller pair of driving goggles. Listen, people in emotional trouble tend to code their messages to make to make them safer, more acceptable. Hi there. Hi. Part of your job is to decode, to hear what's really being said, to listen. Oh, boy, I didn't realize I'd been talking so long. Uh, tomorrow, we'll talk about drug calls and ODs. We'll see you then. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hi. Hi. <coughs> oh, Amanda, I think Rick wants to talk to you. How are you? Welcome. You sound like you know what you're talking about, Professor. I do? Can I buy you lunch? I'll buy you lunch. Go Dutch. Good deal. 
So, what do you intend doing when you finish art school? <laughs> it's not so much when as if. I never thought going back would be so rough. Well, why didn't you stop in the first place? Well, I quit school to get married. You're still married? No. My husband was killed in an accident four years ago. He was a Navy pilot. I'm sorry. Time heals. You married? No. Been close a couple of times. That's him. I bet he was your hero when you were younger, right? Oh, he still is. I bet I've seen every picture he's ever made. You want me to get his autograph for you? I dare you. Excuse me, Mr. Hunter, but may I please have your autograph? Hey, hey, hey Bart, look who it is. Hey, I think your best girl is slipping around on you. Yeah. Justin, I'd like you to meet my boss, <laughs> Kyle Durham. Hello, Mr. And, of course, uh, Mr. Tom Hunter. This is Dr. Justin Price. Mr. Hunter, it's a great pleasure to meet you. I'm one of your biggest fans. You look sensational, honey. Let's get together real soon. Huh? Come on, Kyle. See you tonight, Brian. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you, Doc. My pleasure. So he just hangs out with celebrities? Also, they're, like, so it's a coastal town. You had friends in high places? Why, you never asked. Kyle isn't quite what I pictured. Didn't you say you work for a crippled ex-stuntman? Stunt double. Who'd he double for? Tom. Mm. See, they started together as extras on a John Wayne picture. Mm. And the director liked Tom, so he gave him a small part. Mm. As he started moving up, Kyle became his double. And then Kyle got hurt, so Tom helped him get the shadow box started. Ah, uh -huh. so they're partners. Well, I guess you could say in a way, but they're really more friends than anything else. Tom brings in a lot of business. Sure, I bet he does. What are you doing? Oh, I'm paying for no, my... No, 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 no. This is on me. Okay, thank you. That's not cool. You agreed. there for more money, but uh, he used to work for me. Here I am. Aren't you going to stay? I can't. I'd like to, but i got a class of three. Oh. Yeah, I really wish you'd consider giving us some time. I think you might have a special knack for helping people in crisis situations. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and that is my sales pitch. I've got to get back. Thanks for lunch. Why don't you uh, stop in Kyle sometime? First chance I get. Okay. See ya. Bye. Get some of that hot, hot coffee, bro. Go Dutch. I prefer chai. I didn't even see that. But uh, what I... Justin? Justin, it, Justin is kind of a weird name for an older dude, even though they have to exist. Justin. Okay. I really think I can be of some use. I'll give it a try. Great. I'm gonna need some help. I don't know what they're all be good at listening to other people's problems. Oh, you, you would be just fine. It's the same sort of thing you do across the bar every night. Come on. I won't let you go wrong. What about her class and her dreams? You know, you should always tell us with that. Sure. That guy on the phone's like, yeah, you should really do it, bro. Life sucks. But we're always here for that. That's great. Okay. Bye-bye now. It's not funny. It's not funny. Welcome. Nice to meet you. David? Right. Hi. No, no, no. Gary, nobody's going to hassle you. We got nothing to do with the cops. No, man, you don't want to do anything like that? Come on, let's talk about it. jumbo has got a phone by an open window. I know. I know where he is. Hey, listen, Gary. I want to be your friend, man. So let's meet and talk about it. Where Dude, that's Marv that's Marvin Barry hey, I mean, like, from Back to the Future. That you're in. Is that street traffic? Are you in a hotel? Well, I, I still can't hear you, man. Tell you, do me a favor and close that window, okay? This old lady took off with some dude last week. Took the kids with her. Hi, Sergeant. This yeah, is yeah, man. That's Westside Hotline. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Gotta jump over at the bell. Yeah, you coming in loud and clear, Gary. Thank so you. tell me about it. Bye-bye. Yeah, I know it hurts. Uh, but sometimes Is that it helps the pain to go away if you share it with a friend. Oh, okay, man. But uh, it is. But promise, <laughs> I know, dude. Like I can that. tell. I can tell from his voice. Yeah, I'm gonna be waiting for you. The second he started yeah, talking, I was like, okay. I heard that dude before. Check it out. Dude went to get himself a sandwich because he was hungry. <laughs> Hi, Brian. Rick Hernandez. Hi. Welcome. The West Side Hotline may I help you. Uh, my name is Rick. Hi. 
boss man. We got a runway on four. You want to let Brian handle it? No. Yes. No, no. big deal. Just, just be yourself. Oh. Did you say four? Right. It seemed like there was a whole bunch of people training, and they're just giving her the reins early. Hello, I'm Brian. Yeah, I know it's a guy's name. It's spelled different, though. What's your name? Anoka. Anoka Tornadoes. Where's away? Anoka? <laughs> you know, the same thing happened to me when I was 14. My boyfriend told me that he didn't love me anymore, and I just felt awful. No! It's true, honest. Apparently that's in Minnesota. Well, Helen, why don't you call your mom and dad? No. No, I think they'll understand. What did he write? Promise? Besides, I'm super horny right now. Now, do you have a place to stay? Good. Okay, you need anything, just call. There'll be somebody here to help you. Oh, it's my pleasure. Bye. How do you feel? I feel great. I feel high as a kite. I knew you'd be a natural at this, and I'm never wrong. Right? Right. That's pretty much... But there is one thing I'd like to know. Is it true your boyfriend said he didn't love you anymore? Oh, it's true. I swear it. <laughs> Eight tens. Oh, yeah. I got a pass too. I'll give it up, old man. You're never gonna be smart enough to take me. Ten ten. Ten ten. Come on. Ten ten. <laughs> We're doing some gambling in this bar. Here we go. Challenge. Pass. Oh. Come on. I don't trust you. Pass. I should call, but uh, I'll pass. I got a pass. Call. Call me, huh? I got six of them. Let me see. None. Two. Makes eight. Come on, come on, come on. One. Nine. What Nine. game are they playing? Pass. Oh, no. Hey, our partners. You know, Tom, it's a good thing they pay you for your acting. Man, you'd starve to death. You have to make you play this game. I think it'd be nice if you'd give me a chance to get even. Maybe a foot race up to the highway. Well, that's about the only thing you'd ever be able to beat me at, old buddy. You're skiing. Skiing? Best stiff-legged skier in all of Texas. Bar none. Brian, give the boys a Wait, are they in Texas? All right. Very nice. There's parts of Texas that have... The sea? Hey, old buddy. Brian, tell you about a new job with that doc down at the crisis center. Not yet. She says that helping folks in trouble is good for what ails you. Maybe they could use a couple of beat up old cowboys, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'll paint a big picture of that. <laughs> I'll get it, honey. Hey. Why do you two always need each other? I don't know. This dude wants to bang on the car. You're going diving, Sonny. You want to tag along? No, thanks. I've got plans. They got anything to do with that doctor character of yours? Are you fucking him? It's none of your business. Funny, you wouldn't have said that a couple of months ago. <laughs> a couple of months ago, you were getting a divorce. I still am. Alicia and I are just living in the same house, that's all. I'm oh, sorry, so he's Maybe a I'm real creep. I'm fashion girl, but to me, married is married. Oh, come on, honey. What's the matter? Listen. You just tell me what I have to do to get things the way they used to be. You know how I feel about you. Let's not make things difficult, Tom. You're a good guy. I like you. That's all. I'm not a good guy. Sorry to break up the party, old bunny, but uh, if you want to make the first race, we got to leave real soon. We never make the first race. Just order me one of those steak sandwiches, will you, Pa? I'll do it. Chard rare? Hey, she remembers. Look, old buddy. Stop trying to bang my workers. I know your mind, but uh, that girl works for me, and I'd like to keep it that way. I mean, I'd hate to have to take sides. I don't recall anyone asking you to. I'm proud of you, Helen. I knew they'd be happy to hear from you. Yeah? Well, if I'm ever up that way, I'll be sure to look you up. Okay. God bless. <laughs> He's like, my, I got this job after my band broke Hi, up. Hello? This is 
second time in the last hour. I guess it's somebody trying to work up their courage. <laughs> Hotline, Brian speaking. May I help you? Could you repeat that, sir? Oh, I'm not sure I understood you. They're evil. Sweet smell like that. Evil like poisonous organs. They have to be punished. They do bad things to us, so I do bad things back to them. What bad things did you do? Inflict pain and suffering to hurt them. You hurt them? Yes. Oof. All of them. And I enjoy it. Do you think that's wrong? Who did you hurt? I want you to tell me. Oh, no. <laughs> you can't catch me like that. You'll find out. Is this David Caruso from NYPD Blue? Oh, uh, what? And CSI Miami. You're doing kind of this whisper tough thing. You okay? Sure, my skin is crawling a little bit, otherwise I'm great. Now, crank calls an occupational hazard in this business. If you want to split, I can handle the rest of the shift. No, I agreed to take on this job and I'm gonna do it. Crazies or no crazies. Andy, I've changed my mind. Come on, what are you afraid of? Who are these fucks? Come by. Nobody ever comes to this part of the beach. Come on. Hey, we're wearing the same shirt you for know some. You love me, Andy. Carol, you know I do. What in the world is going on? Andy! Oh, they find the body. Whoa. That's totally not righteous. <laughs> No one's gonna mention the car. Hi, a copper. Well, hello, Brian. How you doing? Does she know oh, everyone? Great. What's going on here? Yeah, well, some kids found a woman's body down the cliff earlier today. Accident? No, murder. Murder. Gore, one too. You're kidding. I wish I was. Lieutenant, we found some tire tracks. Okay, I'll be right there. I gotta go. See ya. Bye. Hotline may help you. Can I speak to Brian, please? I'm sorry, she's not available right now. Uh, my name is Rick. Oh, wait just a moment. She's free. Hold on. Brian, it's for you. Hello, this is Brian. Hello, Brian. It's me. I've done some bad things. Well, if you want me to help you, you've got to tell me what kind of bad things. You hurt people who hurt you, right? Do you thrive? Barber, barber, shave a pig. How many hairs will make a week? What does that mean? Come now, Brian. Don't you read the papers? Well, a lot of people read the papers. We'll have a marvelous time, won't we? You've had your first clue, so I'll be going now. No, no, wait, wait, just a minute. I'm confused. Can't you give me another clue? So it, it's like... No, no, that would be against the rules. What so, rules? So it's I'm like sorry, Seven, I, I don't starring oh, Linda right. Carter and Made for Television. With also a lot more setup. You still think it's a crank? Clever one, but a crank just the same. Well, I gotta tell you, you really had me going. That stuff about Barber Barber Shave a Pig is weird. I mean, really weird. Now you said it yourself, Brian. A lot of dudes read the paper. A crime like this, and the nuts really start crawling out the woodwork. It happens all the time. It's kind of a kinky variation on the obscene phone call. Okay. I'm sure you know what you're talking about. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. All right. How does does this place make money? Oh, dude, if he calls her house, then we have ourselves a problem. 
We have ourselves a problem. Hello? Oh, hi, Dennis. Oh, just Thanks Dennis. Thanks for calling back. What'd you find out? Who's Dennis? Oh, no. <laughs> Is they got beachfront property? Uh, I'm over here. Hi. Oh, hi there. That house he's in probably right. costs like five Can't million finish? dollars I today. Know, I'm sorry. Shut up. Thanks. Uh, a cup of coffee? From that? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. What's well, wrong? Don't be judgy. Well, I got this friend who works for a wire service in London, and I called him last night and asked him if he'd check a couple things out for me. Okay, let's have it. In 1970, a prominent woman attorney was murdered in her Piccadilly apartment. Her hair was cut off and her body was thrown off the London Bridge. London Bridge is falling down, Barbara Barbara right. shaved the thing. Mm -hmm. Did they catch a killer? Nope. That was 12 years ago, Brian. I mean, right now we've got a hotline, a couple sons of Sam, uh, Jack the Ripper. We even have a werewolf, and they're just the regulars. Don't you think we should call the police? If the police were interested, they'd want to tap the phones. And if that ever got out, we'd be out of business. Well, so what do we do now? Keep listening, keep cool. And when we get some real evidence, we'll go to the police, okay? Okay. Look, I'm going up to Santa Barbara today. If you need me, Rick's got the number. Uh, so it has to be California. It be nice up there. Now, you, you sure you don't want a cup no, of coffee? No, no, thanks. Uh, I better be going. See you later. Okay. And he's heading up to Santa Barbara, so it should be south of Santa Barbara. So confused. This is what she wants. Where the fuck does yeah, this take it place? It's simple. Would you like a demonstration? Please. Follow me. Where are you? Right. Now, we stick this end on the receiver. Mm hmm. The other end, we plug into our tape recorder where it's his microphone. Okay. Make sure you've got a cassette in there ready to go. Now, I'll dial a number. And when somebody comes on the line, I'll press the record button. Okay? So far. Let's go. <laughs> this guy's super stoked on this product, ma'am. Or he's trying to make a good sale. Hello, darling. Listen, I'm going to be a little late tonight. I've got to hook up a stereo system for a customer. I love you too. Wait, is that a is this Goodbye, an darling. electronics shop? Hello? Hello, darling. Who are you calling? Listen, I'm going to be a little late tonight. Just just what? I've got to hook up a stereo system for a customer. What are you, some kind of a nut? Listen, you pervert. What do you think you're doing? I love you too. That's I'm really funny. Cops. Goodbye, darling. For what it is, this is a beautiful piece of equipment. I'll take it. Damn. That car is nice. I would take hers over that one, but... Miss Brian O'Neill, are you still mad at me? I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, don't be. I'm sorry. Let's be friends. I'm, okay. Hi, I'm not Friends. quite Burt Reynolds. Listen, that invitation for Sunday still stands, and I'd love to have you. If you'd like to come, you can bring your fellow along with you. Seriously? Seriously. Okay, I'll ask him. Terrific. I expect you both about 11 o'clock. <laughs> Be you Sunday. So I can murder him. Because I'm a man with power, and I don't understand the word no. No, I'm not. I just spilled coffee all over my desk. Hold on. You don't have it ready? Put it on your desk. I'm ready now. That must be said. You solved the first clue. You killed a lady lawyer in London, England, 1970, and you threw her body off the London Bridge. Very good, Brian. You've got a real flair for this game. Is there anything else? You, uh... Cut off her hair. Excellent, excellent. That isn't closely, Brian. There are two parts to this next clue. Part one, if the bowl had been stronger, my song had been longer. Part two, as I drew in my head and was turning around. Good night, Brian. Come
Come on, that isn't enough. If you want me to play this game, you have to give me more than that. I'll give you this one bit more. My thirst was quenched until 72. Who are you? I think the barber would be appropriate, don't you? <laughs> yes, that's it. The barber. So, look for more people that had their hair cut off, clearly. Happening? Anything worth shattering? No. Uh, but when is Justin coming back? Well, tonight, I think. Well, if he calls, well, would you tell him I'm home and I'd like to talk to him? Sure. Okay. Thanks. Night, Rick. Good night. By the way, what is Justin doing in Santa Barbara? Visiting his wife and kids. What? Didn't you know he was married? Oh shit. <laughs> I'm kidding, Brian. Honest. April He's Fools. in Santa Barbara trying to set up a hotline service up there. The truth? So help me. I owe you. Good night. Boy, do I owe you. Dick. Bye. I'm trying to bang our Bye. boss. Bye. This is Rick. I guess it's not their boss if they don't get paid. She hasn't, like, turned on music or listened to anything else other than this, so she's just literally listening to creepy-ass shit as she does her normal day shit. She's got one of them. Where's she gonna go? The library? Three wise men of Gotham went to sea in a bowl. The bowl had been stronger, my song had been longer. That's it. Gotham, New York. is <laughs> always doing shit at the beach. I mean, if you got beachfront property, why not? But... Hi. Don't you ever sleep? Well, I've been trying to reach you since dawn. He called again last night. Another clue? Two. I've solved the first one. It's New York, 1972. He gave you the time this time, the date? No, I, he just said my thirst was quenched in 72. Come on, let's cook up these fish. Let's cook up. Oh, what about the second clue? Well, I haven't solved that one yet. Uh, here, I'll give it you says, a hand. Here. He said, as I drew in my head and was turning around. That's good. Go ahead. Thanks. Drew in my head and was turning around. As I drew in my head and was turning around. You you can repeat that line all day, honey. I don't have a clue. You aren't gonna eat those things, are you? Sure. If you haven't eaten fresh fish for breakfast, you have not lived. What? Smeagol? You know something, Brian? You turned into a cross between you. Mother Goose and Sherlock Holmes. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. It was the night before Christmas. That's got to be it, Justin. He killed somebody in New York City Christmas Eve 1972. Got to go. Well, what about breakfast? No, thank you. No, thank you. You're gross. Justin, hmm? you don't have a wife and kids, do you? What gave you that idea? Just answer the question. No, I do not have a wife and kids. That I speak hey. to anymore. You didn't let me finish. Sherlock sure Goose. Be in the back, that one bat cave from The Dark Knight.
doing research at the library before the internet made them obsolete. Doing research at the library with your hands and fingers and your eyes and ears. Before Google just told you what you wanted to know, you had to go to the library. So is that the actor Tom? Why was he introduced? I mean, I don't know. That's a really good question. I think they're they're throwing him in as possible uh, suspicion because he'll, he'd be jealous. But I, I mean, why would a movie star do all this shit? Justin, I want you to look at this. You still think that the barber is putting us on? The barber? You kidding? No, that's what he calls himself. Boy, has this guy got an overdeveloped sense of the melodramatic? Maybe. But three women are dead. Don't you think you're being a little casual about all this? I'm not being casual. I'm trying to be rational. He's probably a sad, withdrawn little guy looking for a way to become a hero. And claiming to be a murderer makes him feel like a hero. He's getting to you, isn't he? Yeah. I know it. So does he. Let's just take the night off. Let somebody else come in. No, I'm all right. You sure? Yeah, I'm fine. Really. Okay. Look, I've got a date with a group of civic-minded ladies with fat pocketbooks, but uh, can we talk about it later? Sure. Okay, good. Okay. Good night. Good night. <laughs> It'd be very funny if that doesn't mean what she thinks it means. Oh, they're gonna... I'm a gigolo. They're gonna pay me for sex. my husband too four years ago and I didn't think I could make it either but I did and so will you it just takes time I know West Side Hotline can I help you well she's busy right now can you hold call anytime Mrs. Abbott bye bye hey Brian some guy says he wants you okay Gee, you look tired. Been busy? Oh, not too bad. Well, hang in there. Thanks. <laughs> hang in there. I'm not going to help you. Hello, this is Brian speaking. May I help you? Hello, Brian. Who would have guessed? I hope you're enjoying the game because you play it very well. I was expecting to hear from you. We're going to find out very it was the electronic store guy. Civic minded yeah, ladies with fat pop pocket books means they want him to strip no, <laughs> wear a I'm monocle not. and a top hat. I'm tired of you. I think you're just a sick little man trying to get some attention. Ah, oh, Brian. I'm sorry you feel that way. Because I have a clue that's of special concern for you. Are you listening? Let me tell you of Marilyn Haynes. So she's going to find out what happened to those people and then find out that he plans on murdering her next, I'm guessing. Oh 
shit, she got a cat? What are you holding? Is that a spear gun? You hunting Moby Dick? What? <laughs> Very nautical. Very nautical stuff in this movie. But also, what a weird choice. She has a spear gun. <laughs> Linda Carter with a spear gun. This movie is A plus. That is that is that is a choice. It is a choice to be like, no, she doesn't have a rifle. Spear gun. <laughs> what are you doing walking around my fucking house? I could have killed you. Do you realize that? I do now. What are you doing sneaking outside my house at 2 o'clock in the morning in the first place? No, I wasn't sneaking around. I just didn't want to disturb you at this hour. I got back from my meeting, and Vicky said that you'd received a phone call and taken off. I was worried, that's all. You were really worried? Really worried. Well, are you going to tell me about it? Yeah. I, uh, taped it. Sorry. Okay, let's hear it. Let me tell you of Marilyn Haynes, who died of incredible pains. If you look around Braxton and find Charlie Jackson, you might find a clue to these games. Well, he's saying that there was a Marilyn Haynes killed, but the part about Braxton is what I can't figure out. Braxton is the state mental hospital just outside Reno. What are you doing? I'm calling the police. Okay. Uh, Marilyn Haynes was killed in Reno a couple years ago. At least the guy said there was a new investigation underway. That's a start, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Some start. Well, what do you expect him to do? Turn the whole sheriff's department over to you to investigate some coop making cranky phone calls? Now what are you going to do? Kick ass. Spear gun. I'm going to Reno to find that other clue. Don't you think you're overdoing this a little? And she's gonna shoot a man in Reno with a spear. Your reactions to the calls. Kiss him off and it's over. You're awfully sure about that, aren't you? Well, it's Justin? obvious. It's becoming as much your game as it is his. You coming with me? I I couldn't even if I wanted to. I have to see a bunch of patients today. I'd like to make a reservation on your next flight to Reno, please. What a weird... That's a weird transition, but I loved it. Please. <laughs> flight it's to important. Reno. Charlie was the private investigator working on the case. It's against the rules. But I've tried everybody else. He's the last chance I've got. He was a prime suspect. He was only released through lack of evidence. A lot of people still think he's guilty. Besides, his condition is so unstable. All right. Thank you. She's gonna sneak in. Miss O'Neill, I'll let you see. But personally, I think you're wasting your time. Thank you. Where are you from? Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. Yep. L.A. Well, lots of pretty ladies in Los Angeles. If you're any example, think I'll move down there. <laughs> Thanks. You'll like old Charlie. Firm favorite with the guys. He'll keep you laughing all night long with his stories. I'm gonna get out of here pretty soon. Wanna give me your phone number? No. I'll, I'll think about it. There's Charlie. Why is he hanging on to the radio? Security blanket. Hey, Charlie. There's a good looking Is that the dude? I think that's the dude from Hook that lost his marbles. Charlie? Hi, I'm uh, Brian O'Neill. Oh. Hello, Miss O'Neill. Nice to meet you. I'm uh, sorry about the offices. 
New ones won't be ready till next month. Oh, these are fine, Charlie. Hooten, would you, would you do us a favor and get us a couple of cups of coffee? Hooten. Mm. What's going on here? <laughs> Gotta watch out for old Hooten. Thinks he's getting out of here next month. No chance. Nutty as a fruitcake. <laughs> now, what, what can I do? Holy shit, I think it is that guy. Do you remember working on uh, the Marilyn Haynes case a couple of years ago? Toodles. Charlie. Hmm? Fucking toodles, bro. Iced tea. I knew it. I knew it, though. I knew that guy. Was hey, it's Putin. Make that iced tea, will ya? Now, where were we? I was wondering if you remembered anything about Marilyn Haynes. Haynes. A very proud family. Powerful, too. Don't mess around with the Haineses. They're sure to get you. Charlie, Marilyn Haynes was strangled. What? And then the killer. What are you talking about? This movie that? is bonkers. No. Oh, no. Frank Stallone. No. You can't pin that rap on me. Where? Not guilty. I know you're not guilty, Charlie. You see, I've been receiving some phone calls from a man who claims to have killed Marilyn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Charlie, mm -hmm. look at me. Please, I need help. Mm -hmm. You see, he says that there's something about the murder that only you and the family know. <coughs> he says it'll prove that he's the killer. Oh, oh Marilyn Hayes. There's a guy named Barney. Yes. Very tough case. Could I don't remember it. a Barney. Not enough time. Another stinking pervert on the loose. Closed coffin affair. Better watch out, miss. Charlie, please think. Is there anything else you can remember apart from the murder cutting off her hair? Cutting off her hair. Cutting off her hair. Cutting off her head. Head? Decapitation. <laughs> Not a pretty sight. Ah, oh, but we detectives, we get used to that kind of thing, you know. Uh, Develop a strong stomach. Thanks, Charlie. I think I found what I was looking for. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure, Miss. Um, Charlie Jackson, always at your service. Watch out for Houghton. Brian Brian oh, I thought that was in the mental institution. I thought they're like, well, we let him gamble. Brian to the oh, shit. Airport information wants to talk to you? Excuse me. I'm Brian O'Neill. You were paging me? Yes, Miss O'Neill. There's a call for you. You can take it on the red courtesy telephone. Thank you. Oh, Air shit. It's going to be the dude. It's going to be the dude. Hello, this is Brian O'Neill. Did you find what you were looking for? She took a candle to light her to bed. I took a chopper and chopped off her head. Damn. Brian, now do you believe I'm serious? How did you know I was here? I know everything about you, Brian. Where you work, where you live. I have not know what you were to bed. Please. We have no secrets between us, do we? Now have a nice light. I'll be watching and waiting. Are you all right, Miss O'Neill? Yes. Your caller said you were on an early flight. You better hurry. Oh, okay, thank you. Holy shit. 
I don't think we've seen a guy named Barney yet, so I'm wondering when that'll occur. Don't keep looking at the creepy dude. He's going to think you want to bang him. That's apparently how dudes think. Please fasten your seatbelt. We're about to take off. Can you not hear? Oh, continuing to look at that dude. Now let's get into the horrors of Flying Coach! that good music again. I'm just picturing a dude just going nuts on a keyboard. Wow. 34 more minutes. Oh, I thought they were waiting at a wall for a second. I was like, what are they looking at? This fucking dude. Two, please. Oh, shit, she's getting jumpy. I'm sorry, I was wrong. I don't want to be on the same floor as that man. the same parking garage from RoboCop? I'm starting to think the killer paid that guy just to fuck with her. Because <laughs> that look was very funny. Oh, All you didn't need to get out down, on too? Take a deep breath. There. Now, who knew you were going up there? Uh, you? Kyle? Uh, Barney, the relief bartender. But then, Kyle would have told Tom, and Barney would have told anyone who asked. Somehow we've got a nail. Barney, the bartender. Who knew you were there? Justin, he must have been following me around all day. It's, it's just so rare for a phone freak to risk that personal contact. This guy is not a phone freak. Only the real killer would have known that the girl had been decapitated. J Justin, I'm scared. I know. You've had a hell of a day, and Dr. Justin Price is about to prescribe his magic elixir. Two aspirin, and you'll call me in the morning. Wrong. A nice bottle of wine and a good soak. A good soak? In the Mormon sense. 
More wine? This motherfucker. Thank you. Beachfront property. Single. This dude's a murderer. Yeah, these, um, this man these guys murders. These usually aren't homicidal. But in the more extreme cases, the brutality of the murder might serve to freeze the act in their own consciousness. Brian, are you really interested in all this? Of course. Aren't you? Yeah. But can't we talk about it tomorrow? Boning. He's thinking about boning. He's thinking about having sex with you. In and outside of this hot tub. Ooh. Wait, wait. Well. Is that his... Who are these dudes? <laughs> For a hotline owner, he's a smooth operator. Got it. Catch anything? Nope. Haven't baited the hook. Why? He has a crew? No fish in the marina. You know something else? I'm feeling a little bit like a fifth wheel here. Don't be silly. You were invited. <laughs> Brian. Oh. It's just a polite way to get you here. Haven't you seen the way the great man is looking at you? Hey. I'm going to mix us up a couple of gallons of margaritas. Come on, Brian. Professional advice. A couple of gallons of margaritas? Plenty of salt on mine. Who wants another one? He said gallons. Maybe he just fundamentally doesn't know what a gallon is. Take a rain check, Tom. Look. I'm not going to take no for an answer. I probably Look, don't be a bitch. Or... Drink the margarita. <laughs> Kyle remembers, don't you, old buddy? Oh, yeah. The night I won my Oscar. Really? And 14 years ago tonight, my sainted mother passed on to her just reward. I was sitting in a bedside with her, watching TV. I opened the little white envelope and called my name, and the winner is Tom Hunter. She couldn't believe it. The shock of it just... Finished her off. One moment. I want to offer a toast to my mother, Dolores Hunter. Rest in peace, old darling. Your timing was terrible. Tom, you make it sound like she died deliberately just to spoil things for you. <laughs> I wonder why it sounds like that. Because she did, and I'm women are terrible. Look at that rudder. And that's the Tom Hello, Hunter Kevin. guarantee. Hey, old man, why don't you let the maintenance boys take care of it? Ah. Ah. We don't want to risk a drunk diving rap now, do we? You just mixed me up another batch of those margaritas. He's gonna go. He's gonna go diving drunk. Yeah, that seems like a terrible fucking idea. Let me tell you about why I hate my mother. Will he be all right? Oh, yeah. Water will sober him up. He gets a little rough, doesn't he? Oh, when he gets to thinking about his mother. That lady was really something. Went through six husbands. And she rode Tom till her dying day. Jealous. No woman was ever good enough for her, Tommy. Then after she died, the broads he married took him for a fortune. Alicia, the present one, had nothing when he married her. Now she's got a million dollars in the bank, a house in Beverly Hills, and she wants a divorce. Maybe she was just tired of Tom running around on her all the time. They're poison for each other. Bah. Well, I reckon he's got a taste for it. Don't you think we should go and pull him up? Nope. That's my job. At least it always has been. Nice break from the office. <laughs> it's going to end up being that guy. 
<laughs> it's gonna end up being the dude with the bad leg. And he's just like, just because I'm an asshole. I know you think it's probably the psychologist or maybe this actor, but it was me! Hey, you want some more breath, eh? I'll give you the breath treatment. Hello. Hello, who's there? It's me. Your friend, the barber. Please go away. What do you want? Don't you know, my precious? I want you. Justin! Justin! What's the matter? Justin, he called. I didn't hear the phone. I was sitting right next no, to him. No, he called on this phone. It's a private line. Take it easy. He says he's going to kill me. It's How a private line. What a fucking explanation. Hmm? It's him, dude. Come on, you're scared. And when you're scared, Come on. you get a little flustered. And when you get a little flustered, it's easier to get you to bang me. That's what I've learned. I'm a psychologist. I read people. <laughs> I, manipul I manipulate women into sex. Using the powers of psychology. He's going to try and kill me, Justin. No. He's going to kill you. It's me. <sighs> I think I've been wrong. A man admitting he's wrong, he's definitely a murderer. It's all a part of his ploy. Hi, we're the police. Oh, an interesting psychological profile, Doctor. An old-fashioned braid cutter with a good dose of homicidal mania thrown in. What makes these guys reconcile cutting off a woman's hair with emasculating them, I'll never know. If you'd heard him on the phone, Ron, you'd know. Yeah, yeah. I believe you. We just got these reports Cobra? back from London, New York, and Reno. We have ourselves a very bad hombre here. We need authorization to tap the phones down at the hotline. You got it. Brian will let you know when he's on the line. You need to wire your home, too, Brian. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Um, will you arrange protection for her? That's, uh, that's difficult at the moment. You don't have the manpower. But there's nothing to stop you from sticking close to her, is there? What time do you start your shift down at the hotline? It's, uh, 5 o'clock. We'll have someone there at 4.30. Okay. Thanks, Ron. That guy's named Ron. Hotline. Hold on. Marvin Barry from Back to the Future is named Rick. Charlie. Hello, uh, this is Brian. Can I help you? Brian, I'm angry with you. Why? You've broken the rules. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I don't know what you mean. I, d I don't have any policeman friends. I know every move you make, Brian. Every step I you take. you understood this was a game for two. But I... I'm not talking is finished. Goodbye. Wait a minute. <laughs> what part of protected serve means we need to send protection other than the first and here? second part? I'll take the tape back to the lab and have it analyzed with the other ones. That reminds me of, uh... How come Kyle's name isn't on this list? We need the names of all the men who know where you live and have your phone number. Well, that's what you've got. I probably just forgot Kyle's name because I work for him. It's um, a heck of a long list. There was, like, a skateboarding game where I think the cops... What are you smiling at? ...phrase Nothing. was to antagonize and annoy. We're looking for a guy who has mobility. Someone who travels around a lot, right? We could spend weeks checking that list, Justin. I know where one of them is. And he'd have the mobility we're talking about. Who? Tom Hunter. Well, make that two then, because where Hunter goes, 
Kyle goes. Yeah, but we're also looking for a man who is probably emotionally brutalized as a child <laughs> by a strong dominant. I think it was one of the Tony Hawks. I don't think it was Someone a Tony Someone who game. has a problem with women, strong women. I really think you're letting my friendship with Tom color your thinking. And I think you're letting that friendship stand in the way of logic. Show me a name on this list that makes more sense than Tom Hunter. Show me. Well, let's see. You wrote Dahmer. Oh, please tell me she wrote his name. Are you being dumb? Yes, I am. I've also had a rough couple of days, and I'm very tired. Well, why don't you go to bed, and we'll talk about it tomorrow. Man, a serial killer really microwaves a relationship. They're already hating each other. is not the most comfortable place in the world. I spent the morning in the Motion Picture Academy in their archives. You're not going to start on Tom Hunter again, are you? Just, just, just listen. In 1970, the time of the first murder, Tom Hunter was on location in London, England. Christmas 1972, he was making a picture in New York. And we certainly know where he was at the time of the last killing. Right here in town. I just... I just don't believe it. Well, bear with me, will you? Help me check out a couple of things. Okay. What do you want me to do? We know the name of the victims. Let's see if they had any personal connection with Tom Hunter. Okay? Okay. Before moving to London... Before moving to London, victim number one practiced law for the firm that still represents Tom Hunter. The woman in New York? worked in Beverly Hills as a tax account for the same firm that handles his business affairs. And the writer that was murdered here did a story on him three months ago. What about Reno? Reno. Reno doesn't fit. He was on location in Idaho at the time of that murder. So there's no connection. Not yet, anyway. Hey, Brian, two beers. It all sounds crazy to me, Justin. Any spe specificity on those beers? Do they want a Miller Lite or do they want a Corona? Do they want a Heineken or do they want a Blue Moon? They just want two beers? Okay. Thanks. We'll go with Duff. Look, we haven't heard from him in over a week. Maybe it's over. You broke the rules. Are we going to get breathy? I'm sleeping the same way. Hello. Living in Sam. Brian. Ron Chandler. Ron, what's up? We just busted your barber. You're not putting me on. You really got him. He hit again last night. Only this time the girl got away before he could kill her. Has she identified him? Positively. He picked her up hitchhiking. She gave us a description and we nailed him a couple hours ago. She just picked him out of the lineup. Justin, they got him. Is it anyone I know? I doubt it. He's only been on his hair real three months. <laughs> He's already confessed to the beach killing. What about the others? <laughs> Give us a chance, Brian, will you? We've only just started. I'll let you know what happens. Take care. Okay, thanks, Ron. Bye. He wanted to get caught. Or do you think Ron's doing the killing yeah. because he doesn't have real hair? He tried to kill some girl hitchhiker, and she escaped, and they caught him. Guess you won't be needing a bodyguard anymore. So, so you're leaving? <laughs> so I'm out of here. I'm going to go eat some fish for a breakfast and try to hook up with some other women in my hot tub. Justin. Yeah? How come he slipped up this time? Yeah, everybody makes a mistake sooner or later. She's only a young girl. <laughs> Hitchhiker. Doesn't make sense. doesn't, does it? You think it could be the wrong man? Obviously, the police don't think so. When are you going to be back from Santa Barbara? Not late. How late? Don't worry, I'll be here. 
Okay, that's all I wanted to hear. Don't ruin this fucking... Uh, Brian. I'm using the bathroom. She fucked with him. I was using it. Where's the doctor this evening? Oh, uh, he's in Santa Barbara. He'll be here later. Making any money? Oh, yeah. Tall one, huh? And a glass of water. Sure. Any of my party here yet? Waiting for you in the dining room, old buddy. Here you go. Thank you. You feeling okay? Get you later, Brian. He should give up tennis. It's not doing his back any good. Nothing wrong with his back. Hard for his ego. Whatever that means. A few years ago, we were shooting a western up in Twin Falls. Tom decided that he could really do it all. Except the old pony was riding. She had a different idea. Threw him right onto some rocks. Almost broke his back. I've never heard that story before. Well, not too many people have. The uh, studio didn't want the public finding out that their top hero couldn't even stay on a little old horse. We smuggled him into a private clinic down in Reno and shot around him till he healed up. But don't tell him I told you. He's, uh, he's vain as hell about it. <laughs> you gotta laugh. In Reno? Oh, shit. But obviously it isn't him. So, how is this going to... I think it's hi, the dude with Rick, the leg. it's me, Brian. Oh, hi, Brian. I gotta get a hold of Justin. Do you have a number on him? No, I don't. Sorry. Rick, I've got to talk to him. It's urgent. Well, when he calls in, I'll give him a message. Okay, tell him that I just made the Reno connection, and he'll understand, okay? Okay. Bye-bye. Did you guys stop Bye. leaving each other love notes? I'm trying to do some good work for people here while you guys are boning and playing Nancy Drew. Ordering. I want two scotch and waters and a bourbon and soda. She's just going to accuse him in front of some other people. Kyle, uh, where is Tom's table? Number 12, honey. Walking all cool out of doors and such. Hon, I need two wall bangers and a ring of spits. Yeah, why? Oh. Night, Brian. Um, Judy, why don't you stick around for a nightcap? Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I have a date. Hey. -o. Brian, are you sure you're all right? Oh yeah, I'm fine now. You go on, have a good time. See you tomorrow. Okay. 
I'll see you tomorrow. No, she should have been like, I'm not alright. I think I'm about to be murdered. I think I'm about to maybe die. Hey, Brian. How about one for the road? Kyle is still here, Tom. So? What do you want? Well, you know what I want. Well, have a little cognac. Boyfriend of yours. Uh, Justin is on his way. He'll be here any minute. Hey, old man. How about joining me and the boys? One for the road down at the beach ball. Good night, that, dude. Good night. I'll lock up the front, hon. Good night. Thanks, Kyle. See you tomorrow. Hi, Brian. Hi, Rick. It's uh, Brian again. Did Justin call? Not yet. Okay, well. He's probably on his way. Thank you. Night. Why is the light going on? Though? Darkness. That was like a creaking of a ship. <laughs> More time with Breathy McGee. Hello? Justin? Justin, is that you? No, Brian, it's me. The game is over. You lose. Is there a weapon back there? No, I don't really understand her thought process here. So he said he was going to lock up the front, right? So how was she going to get out? Brian? Kyle? Is that you? Sure is, hon. You all right? Yeah, I'm out. Knew it.
are you doing? No. Oh, God. No. No. Please. Barbara, Pretty rhyme. Yeah. Listen. Oh, Kyle, I'm your friend. Don't you know that? I, you I am Ryan. But you turn out like all the rest. Beautiful, sweet smelling thing that traps me. Um, no, you're like wrong. You're wrong. It's I'm not never wrong, Ryan. Never. I watched you drive poor Tom crazy with your naughty body. You're an obscene slut. He has a bad leg. Like, I really don't understand. Brian! 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 So he just left. It's all right, Brian. It's all right. He's gone. He's gone. Uh, Brian. No, Kyle. You know what I'm going to do now? Kyle. I'm going to kill you, Brian. I'm afraid it's going to hurt you very much. Grab the rock and keep going. Just grab the rock and keep going until you, you knock him out. Even though he can't run. So wait, the Tom Hunter dude never, like, <laughs> never put it together that, like, random women that he had contact with keep dying around him? Trap yourself. All of you try to take Tom away from me. I'll never let you. Never. Never. He treats me badly, I know. But he doesn't mean to. He doesn't mean to. I made him a star. I did everything for him. Everything but the close ups. Star. All you want to do is drag him down and fill the rest of you. Never. It's mine. It's mine. Spear gun, motherfucker. Check off spear gun, bitch. Yeah, dude. Yes. That's how you do it. G get him. Spear gun. Kyle. Oh my gosh, I might add an emote that's, that's a spear gun just for this. Just for being you, Shadow. Uh, uh, fuck yes! She fucking missed. Oh wait, did it go through him? 
Oh, shit. Wait, what? Oh, a spear went through his ass. Holy shit. He was an accomplice. I was right, it wasn't Tom Hunter, so... It's all over. <laughs> so, Chekhov's gun applies to spear guns. Johnny Harris, baby. Johnny Harris. We need to get on that Johnny Harris tip. not terrible i mean I, I i don't think it uh it ended as well as i thought it would but um not terrible and you know the spear yeah you're right like she showed up with a spear gun we were like what a weird choice but okay she's got a spear gun to defend herself let's see how this works out and then there's a spear gun at the bar which means there's a spear gun at the bar and there's a spear gun at her house I don't know. Um, <laughs> this town, L.A. is big on spear guns. Got a lot of spear guns in uh, in L.A. Holy shit! Yeah, I think I think I think the story. I think it's start. It, it, the story just had weak points. I, I think with with a little bit of uh, sanding at certain edges it could have been way better it was watchable but not something i could recommend yeah i agree with that i agree with that, for sure. that fucking spear gun dude if that scene was a little more epic like it had a dude with a spear <laughs> hanging out of his body <laughs> but it was made for tv so like that's why it was a spear gun because they probably couldn't use real guns that's why the cops had flashlights um that's why everybody had knives or shears <sighs> that's a that's a bummer dude it's a bummer because that could have been because it really you know it it's a horror movie made for tv so they've got to pull punches and pull gore and pull things that usually would go full bore if it was just going to be in theaters he slumped over and had a dot in his back <laughs> big that's true it was like because she shoots and then you see the spear in like the mirror and i'm like so she missed right obviously and then the dude slumps over and i'm like why is he slumping over did he have a heart attack and then there's a dot on his back like oh it's supposed to have gone through him it would have been it would have looked way worse on the front sure there would have been some blood so yeah i mean i think it's the formats uh the format requiring a certain type of certain certain type of consideration but um you know not the worst i mean we've certainly seen a lot worse uh on this uh on this stream a lot of worse in the public domain i kind of dug hotline it's been it's been a couple of decent movies i mean the the john uh the johnny wow the johnny cash this uh this movie um wild guitar which is kind of out there uh, i accuse my parents were kind of out there but lately it's been uh, it's been a handful of good ones he could have clinched this guy he could have clinched this guy it, or clinched his gut to indicate it wasn't a mess yeah it just seemed like he was standing there he's just like oh and we're like what what's the problem dude you got a shit uh yeah it was it 
<laughs> it was uh it was interesting. I think with I think with the budget of and the permission of an actual full movie, it could have been a little different, but we got what we did. Um, I think that it being on TV was the reason it's in the public domain now, and and I enjoyed it. I, enjoy, I enjoyed some Hotline, and I'm glad you you did a little bit as well, Shadow. Um, thank you to uh, Shadow and Past Tense for hanging out a little bit. Anybody who may have come by even for a minute, I appreciate it. I still like Linda. Who was Linda? Was Linda the other waitress? Oh, Linda Carter. Jeez. Yeah, she was all right. I think there were some I think there were some acting moments where I was like that didn't that wasn't the best, but you know, she didn't do a bad job. Uh That's so weird. The dude <laughs> The dude that played Rick at the call center was named Rick Hernandez. Interesting. Um, but yeah, not, not bad. Not bad across the board. Um, so the next stream will be Sunday in the morning at 9 a.m. Um, we uh, still talk, uh, I mean, still hanging out in the Discord, talking uh, Helldivers 2 and sometimes some movies, and we do Haikus Day every Tuesday. Haikus all up on the the art channel just for funsies so um yeah if you want to uh experience something during the week you can check out the discord i have a link somewhere on all this twitch stuff um but other than that have a good rest of your week and i will see you sunday and next week if you're down for some movies for the boy in the plastic bubble starring john travolta and i assume a plastic bubble or else it'll be false advertising anyway have a good one and peace